Hey guys, thanks for joining. We are going to uh, start in about 10 seconds. We're just going to give the producer Trevor Ritchie a chance to uh, record the space to upload it onto our podcast feed. So just bear with us. EJ, we are good to go. And I think we also already have parallel heartbreak in here. You must not have answered his last DM again. (laughs) <laughs> okay cool so trevor's ready to roll thanks guys as always i'm ej holland with the wolverine.com here to provide the latest on michigan recruiting uh we'll talk about my time on the road this week we'll answer questions we'll dive right into parallel heartbreak here in a second but if you're not a subscriber to the wolverine.com just subscribe now one dollar one year uh yeah you get premium access to everything all the latest recruiting information team information, basketball, baseball, other sports, uh, and you get to interact with the rest of the Michigan community on our Fort message boards, the best message board across all uh, networks for any fan site. So come sign up now, $1 one year. Uh, Everything you get here is a taste. Everything you get there is all the insider information. But no, you guys don't want to hear any more promos. So let's go ahead and dive into the request line with Parallel Heartbreak. Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for uh, getting in early. Yeah, first of all, Trevor, shut up, man. Listen, um, before, I, before I ask my questions, I want to I wanna give a shout-out to Michigan State. Uh, about a month and a half ago, they were number eight recruited. Now they're number 34. Tough coming, though, right? Uh, but, yeah, man, my questions are this. Um, EJ, with the, um, the Dante Moore situation, the longer that draws out, percentage-wise, what chance do you give Michigan? I know it's probably slim. But uh, he had a lot of momentum to Oregon a couple of weeks ago. Now you guys never really heard anything from one of the missions and get back in it. My second question is this. I mean, as far as um, the staff, what, like, uh, be honest with me. I know you, you, you know, you want to keep your ties with Michigan and whatnot. So don't, don't just be too honest. But from an EJ Holland perspective, do you think the staff is doing enough as far as recruiting against other schools like, do you think they're really all given an A game, especially guys like Mike Hart and Bellamy and Newsom who went to Michigan, but they seem to not be recruited so well? And I just look. No, definitely appreciate you uh, hopping in and getting your questions in. Um, yeah, we'll uh, tackle the Dante Moore question first. So, yes, Dante Moore went out to Oregon for another visit uh, right before he competed in the Elite 11 finals. He hasn't announced a commitment date or anything like that. I've continued to hear that it is likely to be soon. You know, I, I know I've, I've received a lot of questions on the message board, on social media, uh, in terms of if Michigan can get back in it because it doesn't look like the Big Ten is ready to make a move with Oregon, which means Oregon's kind of stuck out in the middle of nowhere, the Pac-12 is collapsing. I know some teams are talking about leaving to the Big 12. So what happens with Oregon will be interesting in this conference realignment. In the short term, I don't think it really affects Dante Moore. Uh, I think if a decision comes soon, it'll obviously be Oregon. I mean, if if we're here at the end of the month and he hasn't committed to Oregon, then I think there's something to talk about. But as of right now, I don't think there's any reason to give any type of optimism or percentages. I, I would say that it's very, very unlikely that he sides with Michigan. Again, if, if we're here going into August and he hasn't made a decision, then obviously that leaves the door open. Uh, he has a lot of great relationships with the Michigan staff. He's visited Michigan a thousand times. Um, Michigan's obviously going to stay in the Big Ten and be a national title contender for for years to come, a Big Ten title contender for years to come. So I think that, uh, um, you know, Michigan will always be there. And I don't think Michigan will give up with Dante either. You know, if he does commit to Oregon, I think they'll stay in contact and continue to recruit him until the final bell. Um, You know, it is interesting that Michigan hasn't, offered any other 2023 quarterbacks i know the the market isn't great right now 
Um, so I think they'll continue to evaluate options there, continue to recruit Dante if he does commit to Oregon, but we'll kind of tackle more Dante uh, related later in the month if he hadn't made a decision and in terms of guys on the staff uh you're right you know it is a difficult question a lot of reporters uh, are kind of afraid to offer some critiques uh of staff just because of relationships and all of that look i think michigan has a lot of great recruiters on staff i think guys like ron bellamy steve Klingscale. Uh, Jerome Moore uh, have proven, especially last cycle, what they're capable of doing on the trail. I mean, Clink has a great resume dating time at Kentucky. Jerome Moore, Jerome Moore was one of the best recruiters on Michigan staff, if not the best recruiter, right when I jumped on this beat. Um, you know, George Hilo has great ties in, in the state of Florida and is aggressive. Uh, Jesse Minter was uh, the recruiter of the year in the Sun Belt. Um, you know, I know that's lower level, but he's an aggressive recruiter um, as well. So, you know, Grant Newsom, like you mentioned, I think takes a lot of pride in being at the University of Michigan. I've never heard a bad thing about Grant Newsom. He's very loved throughout the building. Um, and I think with Grant, he's so young that once he gets comfortable being a true position coach, he's going to be a great uh, a great recruiter as well. And Bellamy, even though he hasn't been recruiting at, for a long time, obviously played at Michigan as well, um, was a high school coach, knows how to relate to recruits, played a pivotal role in closing with a lot of guys last cycle. So these guys didn't, you know, forget to recruit. You know, there's been a lot of moving parts this offseason. Um, obviously, you had the Jim Harbaugh NFL situation. You had you know, the uh, the court, both coordinators leave with Mike McDonald jumping over to the Baltimore Ravens. You had uh, Josh Gaddis go out to Miami. You lost Courtney Morgan, who was leading your recruiting department. You lost several analysts that were doing a good job on, on the recruiting front, like Coach Oz and Kyle Devan. So, yeah, I think there was just a lot of loss this offseason. And, and then you bring in NIL and Michigan not – going the route of you know pay for play and so it's not a, a great recipe on the recruiting trail but i think they're figuring out nil i think the, the guys on staff still know how to recruit i think the guys they brought in like i said jesse mentor i didn't mention mike elston who is also uh very pro uh or you know a guy that has a, a track record of being a, a very good recruiter as well i think all those guys are doing a great job i, I think guys like mike hart and matt weiss could definitely pick things up on the recruiting trail. Um, but I think everybody else ha has done a, you know, they, it's not Michigan's lack of success is not due to a lack of effort. And even like Sharon, Moore, for example, who hasn't been landing guys like he used to, I mean, he has a lot of more on field responsibilities. Uh, like I mentioned, he not only lost to van, but he also lost Grant Newsom who's over to tight ends. He's now the co-offensive coordinator. You know, he just had a, a baby born as well. So, you know, it's, uh, I, I know it's, it's tough for him, but I, I think all those guys are giving a effort. Um, and we just have to wait and see the results and hopefully, you know, NIL will kind of correct itself. I mean, if, again, if I were to pick two that could pick it up, it'd be Weiss and Hart. But I feel like everybody else have, uh, done a really good job, you know, as far as effort. Um, let's go ahead and go over to mean boy kyle because he did mention me and wanted to get his question in before the show started hey i have a question about the um notre dame elephant in the room obviously they're killing it with recruiting uh, but let's not forget marcus freeman has never won a game as head coach am i delusional to think that if notre dame has a really disappointing season we could still grab up some of those recruits um, yeah, no, I, I do think that the possibility of Notre Dame having a, a poor season is definitely there. I mean, Marcus Freeman's done nothing as a head coach. Um, you know, they open up with Ohio State, and I think the Buckeyes are going to handle business there, and it'll be interesting to see how their season goes from that game. So, you know, as far as potential flip guys, you know, I don't think there's anybody really – potentially trending to Michigan right now, but I think Peyton Bowen 
has obviously expressed a lot of interest in Michigan in the past and has been open with his recruitment. Mike Elston has a pre-existing relationship with Keon Keeley. So, yeah, I mean, I think the the door would be open there if Notre Dame has a poor season and Michigan has another great season. I think the offseason for Michigan obviously derailed a lot of the momentum. But if Michigan has another strong season, if Notre Dame struggles, then the potential is there. Michigan obviously flipped to Morion Walker late last cycle. They are more than willing or more than capable of uh, flipping others this cycle as well, depending on how the season goes. Now, Notre Dame has a great season or a very good season. I think a lot of those guys will be tough to flip. So let's go ahead and move on to our next requester. Let's go to Ember Plays. All right, Ember plays. You can talk at any time. All right, it looks like uh, he's trying to speak, so hopefully he can. Yeah, I think he's uh, connecting EJ, and I let Parallel Heartbreak slide. But next uh, fan or, or question that comes on and tells me to shut up, we're going to have a problem here. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> All right, so looks like we got uh, some drama on the space. I'm not sure what happened to <laughs> Ember plays, but um, you want to move to the next one? Yeah, let's go ahead and move to the to the next one. That's our producer uh, Trevor Ritchie. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and go to Butch. Let's go with him. All right, Butch, you can talk at any time. You're just muted. All right, you unmuted yourself. Okay. What's up, man? What's up, BJ? Uh, before my question, I just got to say how funny that whole E-Now situation was. You know, albeit frustrating from your end to get your name dragged like that, but, you know, you're the best in the business, and that won't come without some naysayers, so just keep on doing you, and I know you know that. So just had to get that in before I said my question. Um, so now I guess I'm wondering about the defensive backs. I know you were talking previously in different posts how Jair's family – Jair Hill's family is not super high on Michigan, you know, more so Illinois. You know, we've been talking a little bit about Aaron Gates and Florida and his imminent flip. Um, and besides them, you know, I was thinking about, you know, JV and Tobiano and Jacoby Johnson, who, you know, be honest with ourselves, like doesn't really look like they're going to happen, but we still have a long way to go. So I was wondering if you have any other updates on the corners or other defensive backs and maybe any other names that we haven't heard of or just anything going along in the defensive backfield. Appreciate it. No, definitely. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, quick shout out to Ant Ride for hosting me on his uh, Spotify green room earlier this week, letting me clear my name and know that I was not involved in any leakage of information uh, in regards to Eno Etta. Eno and I have a great relationship. All of that has been worked out. Um, you know, I won't mention the uh, leaker by name, but uh, yeah, that was not me. So great we are completely free of that um in terms of defensive back recruiting yeah i think it's it's really interesting right now what i've been told is the approach is the guys that officially visited in the summer are the top guys and those are the guys they're going to continue to work on right now of course michigan has some other you know options some potential guys to move on if they don't land their top guys um but looking at the the cornerback board first uh, Jeremiah Love is at the very top of the corner board. Obviously, he's also one of the country's top running backs. I think Clink has done a really, really good job of recruiting him. Um, I think his preference might be to play running back, but Michigan can pitch him on its previous experience having two-way players. Obviously, they've done that in the Jim Harbaugh era and uh, his potential at corner and his NFL potential at corner and Clink's track record of developing guys, I think has his attention. And uh, Fred Moore told me he's doing, uh, you know, his best to recruit his fellow St. Louis natives. So we'll see how things kind of shake out with that one. I still think it's going to be a little tough to, to pull him uh, considering the competition. But I do think Michigan is right up there, still in the mix there. Um, Jair Hills, interesting situation. I, I do think his parents like Michigan. Like I don't, I don't want that to get misconstrued. I do think that they really like what Michigan can offer on and on the field, on and off the field. But I do think uh, his mother really likes Illinois. It's you know a little closer to home. 
and uh, they've made him the number one like overall guy on their board. Um, you know, where the pathway to playing time is obviously easier at Illinois and not so much at Michigan. So that's something that he's really weighing. And Jair has been honest throughout the entire process. You know, depth chart is something he's really looked at. Early playing time is something he's really looked at. So I think Illinois, although it's an inferior program, uh, can offer him an earlier, you know, chance to play as well as, you know, distance being, being really close to home. Uh, so I think they've done a, a better job recruiting the mom as well. I think Michigan's done a better job recruiting Jair. That one's just one of the more fascinating recruitments of the entire cycle. Uh, I plan to head over and see, um, see Jair here in the, in the near future. Um, so we'll see how that one shakes out. So the, those are kind of the guys you know, on the corner board. I mean, there's some flex guys that, that could play corner. Makari Vickers is a guy that officially visited this summer uh, from Tallahassee. I think that one is a, is a bit of a long shot. Aaron Gates, they, they see more as a nickel guy. Uh, really like what Aaron Gates brings to the board. I mean, he's committed to Florida, obviously, but still kind of weighing his decision, even though he's been uh, a little quiet. I think Michigan is still uh, is still right up there for him. You know, safety is interesting just because they might only take one this cycle and they're really aiming to get an elite guy at, at safety. And so Jacoby Johnson obviously comes to mind, who you mentioned. Um, you know, Jacoby, I, I still feel like Michigan has a true chance there. You know, I, I know he's from Oklahoma, but Michigan did a great job of landing Dax Hill from there a few cycles back. And I do think that they are very, very much in play with Jacoby. He's a high academic kid. That's why Stanford is also in the mix. Uh, he loved his official visit. He's looking to potentially come back for the barbecue at the big house. Going out and meeting him in Oklahoma City this spring, I just got that Michigan kid type of vibe from him. Uh, I think he fits the program well, and I think he felt that on his OV, which is why he's trying to come back for an unofficial visit at the end of the month. So I, I do think Michigan is a legit contender for Jacoby. I know Oklahoma's gotten a lot of predictions. I know Oklahoma uh, usually does a great job of keeping guys in state. You know, I covered the University of Texas. I know what it's like to cover against Oklahoma. And uh, and so, yeah, I know there's reason to be pessimistic as well, but I, I do think Michigan's a sneaky player there uh, for Jacoby. And then Toviano is a guy that can kind of play everywhere in the secondary as well. Um, I love Toviano, and in, in my honest opinion, I think Toviano is the best defensive back in the country. Um, I had a chance to see him at the Under Armour camp in Dallas uh, in the spring. I don't re I think it was March, um, but he just – I mean, he looks the part. He has great length, great speed for his size, moves really well, really fluid. Again, a guy that can play corner, a guy that can play safety. Uh, he really liked his Michigan official visit. I think Michigan's quietly a good player there, but I think it is hard to uh, to pull him out of the Lone Star State, especially in the era of NIL. So we'll see how that one shakes out. But those are kind of the guys to know just off the top of my head. But appreciate you, Bush, for hopping on and uh, and getting your question in. Let's go ahead and go to Owen Bustell. Yo, what's up, Owen? Uh, I can't hear you. Hey, man, can you hear me? Looks like Owen's having uh, some difficulties. Hopefully it's not on my end. Um, let's go to Todd Troy. He's been waiting. All right, guys, we're just waiting for Todd to connect. Um, Todd, you're on. You can speak at any time. You just have to unmute yourself. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you, Todd. How's it hey, going? Hey, great. Thanks, EJ. I got two questions, actually. Uh, one is related to uh, Michigan and possibly getting a new president for the school. And uh, it sounds like maybe there would be more some flexibility there with the NIL piece, possibly. I don't know if you had any insight on that. And my other question is, is the state of Ohio for recruiting? When we had uh, Bo and Lloyd as our head coaches, we we recruited the state of Ohio really well. And we got Rod Moore last year, and he was I think he's an absolute stud. 
um, back there in the secondary. Is there any guys besides possibly Reese who seems like he was here a couple weeks ago, but um, maybe nothing's kind of going f further with that. Is there anybody else from the state of Ohio for, for 23 that uh, we're possibly looking at? Yeah, um, so starting off with your first question, uh, in terms of the president, I can't give away too many details on that. Our Chris Ballas over at the Wolverine has been handling most of the uh, reporting on that. I can tell you that, yes, it does appear that the uh, candidate or potential hire, however you want to phrase it, is more NIL friendly. But again, you know, Michigan as a whole has to decide to kind of go all in on that right now. You know, Jared Wangler, I thought, gave a, a great breakdown of the uh, of the strategy that Michigan currently holds, which, you know, you can find on his Twitter account. So I won't go too much into it. I, I think Michigan's still kind of trying to figure out uh, the best pro approach and the most sustainable approach, you know, in terms of uh, recruiting in the state of Ohio for 23. Yeah, like you said, it's it's basically just Arvell Reese, uh, an on 300 linebacker out of Cleveland. Uh, I think it's it's likely he stays in state and uh, and plays for the Buckeyes. But Michigan's still trying there. Um, he's really the only big target in 2023 right now maybe you know a, a late fall flyer in ohio could pop up um but nobody really there i know clink obviously has ties in the state of ohio being from ohio himself recruiting the state hard in kentucky so i think you're trying you're seeing uh, a bit of a shift in mindset when it comes to recruiting ohio and, and positive you know i think clink clink's made a lot of early offers in 2024 and maybe some offers that aren't necessarily committable right now but he's re-establishing relationships for michigan and ohio so you might not see it right now like they might not get anybody in ohio this cycle but i think 2024 2025 you know clink's relationships the job he's doing building um the job he's done you know just in his past building relationships and what he's doing as far as uh getting back into into several different high schools around the entire state you know not just in dayton but moving into columbus and up into cleveland i think that uh michigan will be more involved with ohio prospects overall in the next couple of cycles i mean clink's relationships are too strong and his uh you know, it, him being there, his ties, I, I think, will help Michigan out a lot. Uh, but at the same time, obviously, it's very difficult to recruit Ohio State. I mean, these kids grew up, you know, whether you like it or not, they grew up seeing Ohio State beat Michigan all the time. I think last year's win was obviously a step in a positive direction. And if Michigan's able to beat Ohio State in Columbus uh, this fall, then, yeah, that could really you know open the doors but as of right now it's just a really difficult task but i think clink is approaching it the right way they do want to get back into ohio i think a lot of people have this perception that they're just not recruiting ohio they do want to get back into the state it's just about having an, an ohio guy they have that in clink and uh and about beating ohio state uh you know i think they can get some more rod Moore types and i i loved Rod Moore coming out of high school. I thought he was underrated. Uh, and like you mentioned, he's he's been great at Michigan so far. I think you can find more Rod Moore types, but I think getting some more wins over Ohio State will lead to the more um, elite level types. But that's kind of a rundown of recruiting in Ohio. Let's go back to Owen. It looks like he joined and uh, hopefully he's got his mic working. Hello. Hey, Owen. How's it going? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Yeah, glad your mic's working. What's up, man? Yeah, thank you, Trevor Rich, for getting me back in here. Um, I got a question about quarterback recruiting in general, uh, not Dante Moore. Um, what are the odds we just scrap it and don't take a quarterback? Like, it seems like Dargosh is in Cincinnati. Um, the LSU guy, they might come through with an offer. And then um, I think Avery Johnson went off the board today. Is it possible that we just don't take one? Yeah, it is possible. I mean, obviously, it's not super ideal considering last cycle Michigan took two project level guys, I guess. Jaden Denigal was my lowest rated recruit in that class. Alex Orgy, I love his potential. I just don't know if he's going to be a quarterback or if he's going to be a linebacker or something else or I don't know. 
bell dozer type of player. Uh, I, I, again, really like Orgy, but I'm just not sold or sure that he's going to be uh, a quarterback long term. So it's not super, super ideal with the nature of the quarterback position and the transfer portal. I think you would like to take a quarterback every cycle. But yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of getting into slim pickings territory. I do really like Ricky Collins, the kid you mentioned from Louisiana. Um, but with LSU likely missing out on Dante Moore as well, it, it looks like they'll make a move for him. And I think he's a, a true flip candidate for them with him being from Louisiana. Um, yeah, I mean, Brady, I, I think the in-state kid, Drogosh, I, I think he's... Um, He's probably the guy I would move with. I think that he has a lot of upside. I had a chance to see him uh, at the Elite 11 Regional in Cleveland earlier this offseason. Obviously, he punched his ticket to the Elite 11 Finals. He had a really high – I don't even think they call it the spark test anymore, but he had a really, really high testing number. Um, And and obviously, he's very athletic. He can make plays with his legs. He has – uh, some good arm talent. He's just pretty raw. I saw actually saw him uh, last year uh, for De La Salle when they matched up against Gross Point South in the playoffs. So I saw him throw against Will Johnson. He had a really good game, led De La Salle to a win. Uh, and he comes from a winning program. He is a winner. Um, so I think if you go for a guy in 23, he's probably it. But it's, you know, like I said, kind of uh, slim pickings there. So, yeah, I would say it's a possibility. And then you look at guys in the 24 class and they're all old uh, for whatever reason. Uh, you know, Rayola's old, Carr's old, Jaden Davis is is on the older side as well. I mean, you could explore pushing for Jaden Davis to reclass, which was a possibility when he uh, was leaning towards Ohio State. I know there was a lot of buzz about him reclassifying. So that could potentially be an option. I know when I talked to Jaden this summer, though, he said, uh, that was not his plan as of right now. You know, things can always change. Um, but that that would probably be the most I think. Jaden Davis is obviously a supreme talent and the number one quarterback in the country in 2024, in my opinion. Um, I, I loved what I saw from him in Las Vegas. So getting him back for the barbecue at the big house at the end of the month, if you're able to seal the deal and pitch reclass, um, I think that would be an option. And like I mentioned at the top of the show, you know, Michigan's not going to give up on Dante Moore no matter what he decides to do this summer. So that's still a potential option as well. But yeah, it's kind of just a rundown with quarterback recruiting. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to our to a different Owen. We'll go to Owen Brown. All right, Owen Brown, Hello? you are on. Hey, Owen, how's it going? Uh, good, DJ. How are you? Good, man. What's up? Uh, first, I just wanted to talk about the Notre Dame trolls. I I saw them invade the fort, and I uh, I looked on their uh, their page on on three, and there's like three different uh, threads just about you. So uh, hopefully, you can catch a break sometime this summer. No, I know. Yeah, they. Um... It's it's weird. They they were on here. They've made like fake profiles of like my cat. It's just like really really weird. Like just like super odd behavior. Like <laughs> and then on top of that, like you said, like their whole board is like about Michigan, and they're they're so weird. Like they they really think that I didn't leave Notre Dame. Like somehow I was fired and immediately caught on. Which and we got our like, like our numbers today, like page views and all of that stuff. And like <laughs> our sites, like <laughs> our, it was like ridiculous. It was like, we, we, Michigan only had one commit in June and they had a ton and we still like double page views, double the message board posts, like everything. Like they were obviously just the superior site. So it's hilarious to laugh. At. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate what you're doing on there. Um, I, I just had a question about, um, you know, like West Coast recruiting. I haven't really heard much about doing out there um, since since we pulled like Zeke Barry and uh, Darius Clemens from over there. And you know, without like Courtney Morgan, who kind of controlled that area, I just kind of wondered if we're just cooling off on that with uh, Lincoln Riley at USC, or like what was the strategy going forward? Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question. So I um, 
am very fond of the West Coast. Just coming over from uh, the Texas beat, uh, covered the Longhorns during Tom Herman's entire tenure there, and he recruited California a ton. So I've, I've been out there quite a bit um, and just really like the whole vibe out there. And Michigan's always historically done well recruiting California. I think this cycle, um, they just didn't create a ton of movement, like you said, with Courtney leaving and some of those ties going you know, out the wayside, I do feel like they kind of didn't recruit California as hard. But Jay Harbaugh was out there during the spring evaluation period. He's kind of now that go-to guy out west. And Jay is always quietly one of the best recruiters on staff. Um, so I think he can continue to build connections and help Michigan get back into California. Albert Karshian doesn't get a ton of love. Uh, Michigan's new director of recruiting operations but he's building some connections out in california he's a a big reason some of the california guys made their way to campus um this summer and if you saw michigan actually offered like a ton of like 2025 2026 underclassmen those were all um albert karshnia and the relationships that he's establishing early on i still think michigan can get you know collins and chimpong out of california i know he's not a true kid he's you know out in cali by way of ghana um but he's gonna play a senior year in the trinity league if they're able to land him i think that'll you know really help um they've had success in the trinity league before uh they landed christian jixon a couple of cycles ago out of modern day um you know and they have like i said they have a ton of underclassmen offers out jay harbaugh saw a lot of 24s uh that they're in the mix with they they had some guys on campus like uh, Jordan Anderson uh, out of Long Beach. Um, They had uh, Ryan Pelham out of Long Beach as well on campus. Both of those guys are are four-star level guys as well. So, yeah, I think that – I think Michigan's going to continue to recruit California hard. It's kind of just a a little bit of a break this cycle with all the the staff movement and everything. But – uh, especially with USC and UCLA coming over from the Pac-12. I think they'll uh, have a lot to sell to guys that maybe are, are willing to leave the Midwest that were a little skeptical or leave the West Coast to come to the Midwest and we're a little skeptical of doing so. I think that gives us an extra reason uh, to potentially want to leave. But yeah, yeah, you know, Lincoln Riley's a great recruiter. Um, I think it's going to be tough to, to pull kids, especially from SoCal, but I do think Michigan's always been an appealing option to kids from California. Um, let's go ahead and we'll take these last two uh, requesters and then we'll get out of here. I got some stuff to do here at home. Um, we'll go with uh, RJ Hines and then Rodney Flyer and we'll get out of here. Um, let's go ahead with uh, RJ first. Can you hear me? Hey, what's up, hey, what's RJ? Up? Uh, first of all, thank you for all the coverage that you uh, that you provide for all of us. Uh, I know everybody that's not in here, that's not a Notre Dame troll, really enjoys it. Um, I guess I have just two questions. The first is, uh, how many edge prospects do you think Michigan is willing to take this cycle? And then uh, getting some odds Bridgman, uh, I'm assuming that we're trying to get another linebacker too. So what do you think is the most realistic take for uh, to go along with Bridgman? Yeah, definitely. Um, to answer the linebacker question first, yes, they do want another linebacker, but I think right now it's kind of just more about resetting the board. Uh, I thought they would have a legitimate shot with Jaden Robinson, who was scheduled to come in for a fall official visit, but he committed before that and just went ahead and decided with South Carolina yesterday. So he's kind of off the board. I don't think Michigan's going to get get back with Raylan Wilson, Phil Picciotti, uh, committed to Oklahoma yesterday. So I think options have kind of dwindled on the linebacker board. I, I'm interested to see, you know, what what guys they go after. But, you know, they're, they're still shooting their shot with guys like Arvell Reese uh, out of Ohio, even though he's been a, a heavy Ohio State lane. They're shooting their shot with Jaden Osbury from Louisiana. But I think he's going to be a tough pool. We'll see what other options kind of pop up at at linebacker over the next few months. Um, And then in terms of education, I think they're willing to take um, three or four. Uh, I think Michigan's in a great spot with Enoetta 
the Sea Bears to make a decision that's going in the near future. I think they're in a great spot with French prospect uh, Kumba and Merrick. Uh, I think Michigan leads there. Obviously, Michigan is uh, in the final groove for Collins and Chimpong. Like I mentioned, still optimistic there despite Miami's run. Uh, so I could easily see those three guys in the class and then you know, there it'll it'll be interesting to see if they take a fourth. Obviously, Nicholas Harbor, we're still counting him as an edge, really more of an athlete prospect at this point, since he might end up on the offensive side of the ball. But for now, we'll count him as an edge. He would be the obvious fourth guy. Uh, Michigan continuing to uh, be a major player in that recruitment, expect him to come in for a fall official visit. So that's kind of what the edge board looks like right now. We appreciate you, RJ, and we'll go over to Rodney for our last question. Hey, how are you? Um, hey, Rodney, how's good. it going? Um, you know, I appreciate the insight and, you know, I learned a lot from all the discussions and, you know, just as an outsider, the Twitter, the internet, everything has just gone crazy and turned upside down with the news of USC and UCLA coming into the Big Ten. How, you know, it, obviously it's going to have some it back, but how much is that going to impact recruiting? Even this year, you know, talking about some of the folks from California that Michigan is going after, like, is it just not part of the discussion or the picture, or does that have some impact on the recruiting that's going on now? Well, I think you can look at it two ways. One, like, you know, I just mentioned that previous question. Um, I think Michigan is capable of pulling guys from California. I think guys that are wanting a new experience or wanting to leave now kind of have that extra push on the flip side of the coin. You could, you know, if you cover USC, you could see, you could say, Hey, this gives us a, an opportunity to pull some guys from the Midwest. So I think you could look at it, um, you know, from both angles in terms of bigger picture, it'll just be interesting to see what happens with, you know, conference realignment as a whole, you know, if Oregon does get left out of the picture, then, you know, they have a great class going on right now. That's a school that you could potentially, you know, try to raid the class. Same with Washington, um, but yeah, I think we all just have to kind of take a, a seat back and see what happens. I mean, e even Notre Dame, it's not a guarantee that, you know, they end up in the big 10 or in a conference. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with them. You know, that could be another potential class to raid. I mean, Michigan's obviously safe being in the big 10. It's going to be one of the power conferences. So I think, you know, right now, it, all of that won't go into effect until, you know, 2024 um at the earliest so we just have to wait and see what happens with conference realignment as it pertains to recruiting but i know a lot of recruits are kind of you know starting to look into that and, and seeing the way college football is shaking out as a whole i know i said that was the last question but we had a, a last minute person join solution uh so we'll go ahead and get him in and then get out of here <laughs> All right, Solution, you can talk at any time. You just have to unmute yourself. All right, I'm not exactly sure what's going on with Solution. Looks like he unmuted himself. What's up, man? Yeah, what's up? Good, good morning. All right, what's, what's your question, man? I'm having a little bit of a tough time hearing what you're saying. Yeah, um, actually, I just joined the space, so I'm not enjoying the conversation, so I really don't have uh, any question for now. Oh, okay. It looks like Solution accidentally joined, so go ahead and move on to Dakota Davis and get out of here. Um, sorry about that, guys. All right, Dakota's just, uh, just connecting right now. Um, having some technical issues as we head into the uh, final stretch of the space. Sorry, I'm working on it, trying to get him in here. I thought that was Morgan Freeman for a second, actually. <laughs> I know. I was like, what, what is going on here? Um, but no, guys, I guess uh, as we wait for Dota to get in, look, he's not getting, getting in at this point. Uh, he disconnected. So I appreciate you guys for joining the space. Sorry we ended on <laughs> a bad note there with uh, two guys not, 
being able to connect or get questions in. Uh, but we appreciate you for joining. As always, subscribe to thewolverine.com. One dollar for one year. Get premium access to all our great recruiting and team information. Um, again, appreciate you guys for joining.